Hey, Tom here from the Run Testers with another running shoe multi tester review. In this video, myself and three more of the Run Testers are going to be reviewing the new Hocker Kawana road running shoe. Let's take a look. The Hocker Kawana costs £125 or $140. It weighs in at 309 grams or 10.9 ounces for men in a size 9, and the drop is 5 millimeters. The Hocker Kawana is a maximal cushion shoe that features Hocker's new CMEVA midsole, a foam designed to give a responsive and lively feel. It also features a subtle version of Hocker's Swallowtail extended heel, which, along with a crash pad, aims to promote a smooth ride, specifically for heel strikers. Hocker says it's a shoe built for versatility, offering comfort at any pace. There's an early stage meta rocker to produce a smooth transition, and the engineered jacket mesh upper aims to be both breathable and supportive. So the Kawana was true to size for me. Um, I actually found it had a slightly wider, roomier toe box than other hockers, like I've tried, like the Mac 4. But yeah, it was really nice, comfortable fit, plenty of room in the toe box, and I would stick true to size. So fit-wise, the Hocker has been okay for me, uh, not perfect, uh, but I think things like the uh, space you're getting um, in the toe box, I think the kind of support uh, that you're getting on the sides of the foot are uh, pretty solid overall. This is UK size eight, I've got quite a narrow um, foot and it works well for me. Um, you're getting a kind of reasonably padded tongue here and you're getting some kind of extra padding within inside here around the, um, the kind of heel. Now I did find that when I ran a little bit um, longer in these shoes, I was starting to get some niggles in my Achilles. Um, I know that kind of Hock have done something in terms of the kind of ch construction of the uh, kind of support around the kind of Achilles area, but I definitely found like I was kind of getting some kind of rubbing and um, it wasn't feeling the most comfortable for me. So generally kind of the upper itself, fine, but definitely the Achilles area, I definitely kind of experienced some issues um, myself in my testing. So I'm out running now with the Kiwana. And in terms of fit, I think I would go true to size in these. I'm running in a UK eight and a half, which is my size. And I feel like there's just the right kind of fit. It's hugging nicely. Uh, they're dead comfortable when you first put them on. I'm getting no pinch points, hot spots. Plenty of, a little bit of room at the front of the toes, but not too much. They are a little bit tight, perhaps in the toe box, but that's something that's quite familiar with Hoka shoes. No hot spots, no burning, no rubbing points. Actually just a really nice, snug, controlled fit. True to size for me. So the fit for me in the Hocker Kawana, it's it's fine. It's fits true to size. I would say that it's a Hocker. It, Hocker are normally a bit narrower than a lot of other shoes out there, and I did find that with this shoe. It did feel comfortable when I put them on, but on the first couple of runs that I did in them, they did feel a bit restrictive around the midsection and the towards the forefoot of the shoe. So it, it got a bit uncomfortable on those runs. After those first two runs, it started to loosen up a bit. And now I've gotten to maybe my sixth run in them. There, I'm not noticing any issues with the narrowness. I think you just need a bit of time to sort of loosen that fabric up at the top. But other than that, fit true to size for me. My run test, I've done about 50 miles in these. I've done a fair amount of kind of this kind of stuff that you can see around me, these kind of compacted sort of gravel paths. I've done a bit on the road. I've done some river paths. A good kind of mix of the kind of stuff that I would normally run in training. And these shoes, I have to say, I've been really impressed. I really kind of like them, if anything, because they feel to me like a bit like a harking back to Hoka shoes gone by. More than the kind of things where we've seen like those edge shoes with the hulking great back heels or even the Hoka Bondi X, which I don't quite get. I feel like there's too much Hoka shoe going on. There's not as much here. It reminds me a little bit of a Rincon in terms of how it feels on the foot, in terms of the overall amount of shoe you're running with but also I just think in terms of the ride loving the bucket seat feel that you get with Hoka it's very pronounced here I feel like the uppers are, are smooth they hug really nicely it's a dead comfortable to shoe to put on when you first put it on fits like a glove and feels great from the first moment you know one of those shoes you think oh this is going to be nice to run in when you get out there there's not a huge amount of response I don't find coming from this but then I don't mind that I don't necessarily want that kind of I don't really look for that massive kind of squish and punch in every single shoe that I run in. Sometimes I just want a shoe that's going to give me a good stable base, be cushioned but not too cushioned, and just help me kind of tick through easier miles. 
this feels to me like one of those shoes. I mean, the big problem here with the court that this shoe has is that there are many of those shoes. And in fact, there are many of those shoes already in the Hoka stable. And I, you know, I'd put this up against maybe a Rincon 3 for choosing whether or not I'd go and run in it. It feels like there's a bit more substantial shoe here than the Rincon 3. The Rincon 3 feels a little bit more minimal. There's a bit more structured uppers, makes you feel a little bit more secure. But overall, so far on the runs that I've done, I've been quite impressed with this one. So I think today is a brilliant example of what this shoe is kind of ideal for. I've come out, it's the days between Christmas and New Year. I don't really know how I'm gonna run. I just wanna come and plod around, be in this beautiful environment, not moving with any particular pace or intent. And this is just a perfect rolling shoe. You're getting a little bit of that kind of hoka rocker motion going on. For me, it's not massively pronounced, but it's there. And just every footstep feels protected without being heavy. It feels kind of cushioned for me without being too squidgy and too kind of propulsive, but everything just fits right for me here with this shoe. It's a shoe that I know on many occasions that I'm gonna sort of reach for to lace up to come and exactly run exactly this kind of run. Though Hoka probably hasn't produced a shoe that's remarkable in any particular way, it's kind of remarkable for being unremarkable, if that makes sense. It just feels nice to run in. So I've done a fair bit of running in the Kiwana. Mostly that's been easy stuff, kind of sticking to what the shoe's really built for, but I have done kind of one run with some kind of faster stuff at the end of it. And in general, I don't really have a bad word to say about the shoe, but I also don't have anything especially good to say about it either. It's a shoe that disappears on the foot pretty nicely when you're out on the run, but it doesn't really have a very memorable ride, it's fair to say. Like, uh, there's not really, this foam I don't think is that soft. Hocker's billing it as a very soft foam, but I found it comfortable, certainly, but I don't think it's super soft. I actually think something like the Mac 4 is a bit softer for me. But yeah, like I said, it's a comfortable ride. There is a slight rocker there, but it's not very pronounced. It's not exaggerated. The transition from heel to toe for me, I found was pretty good. But, you know, when I did step up to faster paces, it wasn't especially smooth and dynamic or anything. It's definitely a shoe that I would consider really an easy day option. Um, and within that bracket, it serves the purpose perfectly well. But it's not a shoe that really left a lasting impression on me after any one run. Just found it a perfectly solid, easy day option, but one that doesn't really stand out from the crowd. So the Hocker Kiwana is an interesting shoe for me because I've tried a lot of Hocker shoes recently and some I've really been impressed with, some I've not really been that bothered about. They've not really had made an impact on me. And it almost feels like I've used the same shoe before, but it's had a different name from Hocker. The Kiwana kind of fits into that category for me. It has a new midsole foam in it, which is I was hoping was going to be quite exciting and, and interesting. It wasn't really for me. I think it's fine. It's not a major update that I noticed. Um, I've been recently running it in the Hocker Mac 4 and that shoe is just a fantastic um, all-rounder shoe. It's very versatile. It's very lightweight. You can use it for short, fast runs. You can use it for long, slow runs. And it just feels really comfortable. It feels really efficient and enjoyable to run in. The Kiwana, it, it's not a bad shoe. I, I, I've i ran about 60, 70K in this so far, and I've, I've not had a problem with those runs at all. It's just not really wowed me in any way. Every run I sort of finish, and I think they were okay. No major interesting points to that. I didn't really enjoy it, but they did the job. Um, so yeah, I think it's just an okay shoe. There's nothing about it that's really impressing me the upper fit isn't as good as the hocker mac 4 for me the midsole feels a little bit firm for me i like the the slightly softer feel of the mac 4 um and it does feel like there's a lot of midsole foam in this shoe but it's not it's not very forgiving there's not a lot of bounce in it there's not a lot of softness to it it's a little bit of a firmer ride so i'm not i don't find that a bad thing i just didn't enjoy it as much as i do with some softer bouncier uh, hocker shoes there's nothing, there's the swallowtail design at the back. I always mention this when I do videos. I don't really notice any value to it. I'm not a heel striker, so I don't get a lot from it. It's definitely a nicer option here because in some of Hocker's shoes more recently, that swallowtail design has been quite big, especially in something like the Carbon X2. And I just felt it was unnecessary. This is minimal. So if it works for a heel striker, that's great. But if you're not a heel striker, it doesn't have a big impact on the run either. So I think it's fine. I think it's enjoyable. Maybe if you like a firmer ride, but you still like a bit of cushioning, I think this shoe would be quite nice. But for me, 
it's just an all right shoe. I didn't really get a lot out of it and um, I'd be happy to run in it, but I've got other shoes that I prefer to run in for daily training miles. So in terms of the run test, uh, I've done well over 50K in this shoe. And as you can probably tell, maybe not tell by the uh, state of the condition, I took these on holiday. I did a bit of beach, kind of beachside running, kind of off-road running, but I did do plenty of road running as well. And what I found is, Yes, the Hocker um, kind of new uh, midsole cushioning that's used used here is soft, um, is responsive. Um, I just wasn't blown away by it. A little bit like I was uh, the way I felt about the Bondi X. I think it is comfortable shoe to run in. I you know it definitely felt better, kind of slower, kind of casual, easier paces. When I tried to pick up the pace in them. It didn't really work for me. They just didn't feel lively enough for me. Um, I think there's other kind of shoes like this or in this kind of profile or kind of fit this criteria that I think work a bit better at different uh, kind of paces. I think for me, this is a shoe that's built for kind of comfortable, long kind of distance runs where the pressure's off and you're just going out and running and want to enjoy it. And from that perspective, it works nicely. But I just think... Um, I wasn't blown away by the shoe by any stretch of the imagination. Now, in terms of the outsole, um, it's generally fine. Um, it's holding up pretty well after um, 50K or over 50K's worth of running. It's a bit dirty, um, kind of grabbing a bit of mud uh, in, in the process. But ultimately, that's kind of a, a kind of real kind of solid um, part. And I think from a durability point of view, works really nicely. But for me, yeah, I think the... The Kiwana is okay. It's a nice cushioned, uh, soft uh, shoe to run in, but I just think um, it's not very versatile. I don't think you can run quick in it. I don't think you'd want to run quick in it. Um, I think if you're just looking for a shoe, maybe just to run um, easy kind of um, effort runs, then I think it's a shoe you could probably fit that um, profile quite well. So my verdict on the Hocker Kiwana is it's fine. It does the job. It's a comfortable, nice shoe. It is a bit firmer than what you get from some of the hawkers. Um, and if that's what, if that's your bag, then it might it might work for you. For me, I just don't think there's enough in this shoe to really justify a new shoe being launched for it. Hawker do a lot of shoes already that do a similar thing to this. Um, and it, things like the Bondi, a little bit a little bit softer, a little bit more cushioned, but it feels very similar to this shoe for me. Same as the Clifton, um, I don't really get the, the, a lot different from this shoe than I would in the Clifton. The Mac 4, I do get a, a, a significantly different ride from, and I enjoy that shoe a lot more than this shoe. So yeah, maybe if you love Hocker, you love the fit, you love the design, and you just like the firmer shoes that they, they release, this may be for you. But for me, there's not really enough in this shoe to justify a new shoe being launched. So yeah, the Kiwana is a perfectly decent shoe. Uh, I think it's a pretty good easy day option, but it doesn't really bring anything new to the table for me. And Hocker obviously makes actually quite a few shoes like this. I think that do a really good job in a similar category. I actually think something like the Mac 4, which for me handles easy running really well. I find it a very comfortable shoe, but it's still much lighter and more versatile than the Kiwana. I think that would be an option I'd certainly be looking at within Hocker's range ahead of the Kiwana, just for extra versatility while still being a nice easy day option. There's things like the Bondi, the Bondi X of the carbon plate, um, the Clifton is, is softer I think and a slightly different ride but again serves a similar purpose and it will knock off your easy runs pretty well and then we're looking at other brands there's loads going you know there's loads out there the Brooks Glycerin is a shoe I really like um, a long running line that has a nice comfortable ride really nice plush upper eats up easy miles no problem something like the Puma Velocity Nitro is kind of my cushion shoe of choice at the moment and that's just a little bit nimbler more agile lighter faster than the Kiwana while still being comfortable on easy runs so just get something that's a little bit more versatile it's also a fair bit cheaper and then I think another shoe I really like in this bracket is the Nike Invincible just because that is a really standout memorable ride it's got a very soft you know springy foam there in the midsole um, and it's you know it brings a lot of enjoyment to me on kind of easy runs in a similar way actually to the Asics and Overblast 2 the Kiwana just doesn't really do that like it's it's fine. It does a solid job. It will do your base training most. I don't think it's a particularly versatile shoe and it's not really a standout in this category for me. And there are so many good easy day options. I find it hard to recommend it. So Hogger is clearly trying to sell the Kiwana as a more versatile shoe than the Bondi. Uh, but ultimately for me, I found the shoes very similar. Yes, it's less kind of clunky than the Bondi, but I think ultimately the feeling of running in a shoe feels very similar. Um, I still think it works best at the kind of easier paces, but even then I don't think it, you know, I think there's more enjoyable shoes 
kind of cushion shoes out there that I think you could look at as well. It's a com you're getting a comfortable upper, but I obviously had those Achilles uh, niggles as well. But if I was looking at a shoe that's kind of sold the way that the Kawano sold, I would probably be looking at the Socony Triumph 19 or things like the Puma Velocity Nitro. I think offer a more versatile experience where you can throw a lot of different sessions at and also get something that I think holds up well um, for longer distance as well. So for me, the Kawano, uh, a comfortable um, kind of solid shoe for kind of easy runs, I think. Uh, but outside of that, I don't think um, it really excels um, outside of that. My verdict then, I think these are a really solid pair of shoes. I think it's actually a bit of a return to some kind of form for Hoka. Not a big fan of all the big protrusions they've been putting on shoes. Those edges, those massive kind of swallow tails. And these feel like they're going back a little bit to basics. But what you've got is a combination of a good upper, I think a good, just soft enough sole for good cushioning. Super comfortable to run in. Nice firm or ground contact kind of platform to run on and to run long and slow on. And yeah, I think it's a really, really good pair of shoes if that's what you're after. Now, the other competition that I put this up against the Adistar, another good shoe in this kind of bracket. Pure Velocity Nitro, perhaps a little bit more nimble, perhaps a little bit more responsive. You've also got things like the um, Nike Infinity React at this kind of area. I think these are the shoes that I'd put it in. And also, of course, a Hoka Rincon 3, which I think is another really good shoe for this kind of run. Although the Rincon 3 is a little bit lighter, a little bit more nimble. I think you want to be able to push the pace in the Rincon 3 a little bit more. I would also stick into this bracket things like the Bondi and uh, maybe the Bondi X, although I wasn't a massive fan of the Bondi X. I didn't really notice the carbon plate. Don't really sort of see that as a, a compelling shoe at the price point. Um, but yeah, overall I think the Kiwana for me are a shoe that I would easily adopt into my rotation for when I want to run long, slow, steady, go exploring and just run with almost guaranteed comfort. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon. And don't forget to check the channel out for all the other videos we've got on the latest road and trail shoes as well as headphones and running watches out at the moment. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.